Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. This week's video is based on a question that I was asked during a training session last week. And the question was, how can I display the value of a selected item in a slicer? And what if more than one item is selected? In this video, I'll show you the solution that I came up with. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. I'm using the Mac version of Excel for this video. However, my solution works exactly the same on Windows. This dashboard is used by senior management at Excellent Ice Cream to track various KPIs. And as you can see, the slicer contains the names of the states. The slicers are connected to pivot tables, which are stored on the pivot sheet. And those pivot tables drive the charts and key stats in column B. What I want to happen is every time I select a state, everything on the dashboard updates, but I want to display the name of the selected state in B7. The first step is to create another pivot table, which I will put onto the pivot sheet. So I'll go to my data and this data is stored in a table called orders. So I'll click on insert pivot table, choose where the pivot table is going to go. It's going to go onto the pivot sheet and it's going to go into M2. Onto the pivot table, I'm going to drag the state into rows and that's it. I just want a list of states. So that's all I'm adding onto the pivot table. Next, I need to connect the pivot table to the slicer. In order to do that, I need to know the pivot table's name. So my cursor's in the pivot table. I'm on the Analyze tab. And on the very left hand side of the screen, you can see the name of the pivot table. It's pivot table one. So I go over to the dashboard, click onto the slicer, and click on the slicer tab on the ribbon and then click on report connections. And it shows me all the pivot tables in the file. It shows me which sheet they're on and it shows me whether they are currently connected to that slicer. Tick pivot table one and click OK. So now all the pivot tables on the sheet are connected up to that slicer. When I click a button on the slicer, what it will do is it will apply a filter to all the pivot tables, but we're only interested in the one in column M. So I selected West Virginia. It's applied a filter to the pivot table, and that's why it's showing me West Virginia. Whatever state is selected will always be displayed in M3 on the pivot sheet. So back in the dashboard, I'll go to B7 and enter a formula which references pivots M3 and press enter. If I change the state, so I'll click on Delaware, what it's now done is it's now put Delaware into M3 and that goes through to B7. Now, what if I clear the filter? Well, now it's showing Alaska. Why is it showing Alaska? Because on the pivot sheet in M3, we have Alaska. And if I select multiple states by clicking on one of the states and then holding the command key down or the control key on Windows and selecting several other states, it's now showing me Alaska. Why? Because in M3 on the pivot sheet, we've got Alaska. So as you saw, if I selected all of the states or just several states, it only picked up one value and put that into B7. What I want to do is display all the selected states in B7. In the pivot sheet in N2, it could be any cell, but I chose N2. I need a formula to combine together the values in M3 through to M14. They are the cells that contain the states. When a filter is applied, some of the cells in M3 to M14 will be empty, but I can account for that in the formula. However, before I enter the formula, I need to hide the words grand total. Why? because with a filter applied, that will move up and occupy one of the cells in M3 to M14. 
To show you what I mean, I'll go back to the dashboard, I'll pick a single state and go back to the pivots and you can see the word grand total is in M4. And if I select multiple states and do the same thing, the word grand total is on M6, which is still within the range M3 to M14. Let me clear the filter, go back to the pivots and to hide the words grand total, I go up to the design tab, click on grand totals and say off for rows and columns. And then I can enter the formula. So in N2, as I said, the formula is going to combine the values in M3 to M14. And I want a comma and a space between each one. And I want it to ignore any blank cells in that range. In fact, I'm not going to use M3 to M14. I'm going to use M3 to M20. By including some extra rows, up to row 20 in this case, it means that if more states are added to the source data, they will appear in the pivot table. So in N2, I'll put equals text join. The first parameter in the text join function is the delimiter, and that is the character or characters to be used as the separator. So in this case, in double quotes, it's going to be comma space. Then I put a comma as the parameter separator and I'm going to select true because I want it to ignore empty cells. And the third parameter is the range, which in this case, as I said, is M3 to M20. Close the brackets and enter. And at the moment, if we go back to look at the dashboard, all the states are selected, which is why it's displaying all the state names with a comma and a space between them in N2. If I go back to the dashboard and select one state, it's just showing that one state. And if I select multiple states, it's now just showing those states. What it hasn't done is it hasn't pulled that through to B7. What I'll need to do is change the formula in B7. So instead of it pointing at M3, it points at N2. So I'll just go and edit the formula and change that to N2. And now it is showing the contents of N2. Now, at the moment, the contents of B7 are spilling out and being hidden by the chart. So I can fix that by increasing the height of row 7 and changing the alignment of B7 to top aligned and also turning word wrap on just for that cell. Looks like I'll also need to change the height of row 7 to be a little bit taller. So whether I select one state or whether I select two states or three states or all of the states, what it's doing is it's showing me the selected items in B7. And it's doing that by picking up the contents of N2 from the pivot sheet. And N2 is being generated by combining together the contents of M3 to M20 from the pivot sheet. Well, I hope that's been useful. As always, thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. If you'd like to stay up to date with what I'm up to, you can subscribe to the channel and you can also subscribe to my free newsletter. You can do that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.